I got into climbing when I was traveling in South America back in 2011. Came home and was like, holy, I need to do more of this. And there was, I didn't know of anybody on the islands uh, at the time that, that had anything. So I was just like, okay, well, I'm just gonna build something uh, on my own. Basically had to, to build it in here in order to, to make it fit. This is affectionately known as the Callus Palace. Given the fact that we live on a sandbar, it's kind of the only option that you have. As I was sort of getting more into it, I was learning, okay, there actually is other climbing people on PEI. So I reached out to some of them and said, hey, you know, if, uh, if you want to come check out my wall, I'd be more than happy to, to have some people come in and join me. And we sort of, we called ourselves like the How Point Boulder Society, you know, just jokingly. But it was good. We, we had like a once a week thing and everybody came every week. And then, and then yeah, that sort of ended whenever uh, whenever I went to Spain. I went there to teach English, uh, but, but really it was, I, w I went there to go climbing and teaching English was my avenue to get there to do that. And it was actually, it was Christmas Eve of that year, because that was the, the winter we had like a crazy amount of snow. And so I'm calling home Christmas Eve and my younger brother tells me, he's like, got some news for you. Climb a wall, full of snow, psh, crashed. It was, yeah, the whole building was just crushed on top of uh, on top of the, the cave and the, all the roof system, everything that we have there, but it was still poking up, like you could see it from, from the outside. So I was like, hmm, this, is, this isn't too bad. It was just the old tin roof that it fell down uh, on top. So I could get inside and um, I managed to extract just about all of the sheet supply except for one that were in there that had holes on them. So I didn't even need to, like I didn't take any holes off or anything, I just went in there with my drill pulled the screws out of the sheet supply and hauled those sheets out of there and I just left everything else because it was like way too dangerous to be even doing that anyways because there's like a roof is literally going to fall on you every time I like move the sheet apply right and I was like okay this shouldn't be in here but I really want those holds back so I'm going to do it anyways. So got all that stuff out and yeah that's when I that's why I found this place and had, was fortunate enough to uh, to be allowed to use it. Christmas 2014, we spent three days building what was supposed to be a relatively budget build. We knew the corner we were going to use, and as we started the build, it, uh, it turned into, well, Frank, it would, we might as well just build it around the corner too. So then we built a section around the corner, and we had, uh, we still had some wood left over, and it's like, wow, we might as well close in the top too, so that, you know, it's a full, full cave, and you can climb on the roof, or you can climb on the wall, you can climb whatever you want. So just kind of blew up from there. We've got, you know, large ones, we've got smaller ones, we've got tiny ones, natural feeling ones, bubbly ones, blocky ones. Then sometimes you can get real creative and make stuff out of wood. This was just a, uh, I think it was a fireplace log originally and I just took the grinder to it but uh, yeah, there's no, uh, there's no limit to the fun you can have. We made this last November. Actually, a friend of mine that kind of got me into climbing in a roundabout way, who was a carpenter, helped me build this place. It started as this main flat panel. Since then, we've added lots of volumes, lots of holds, and I hope it just keeps growing and growing. I love coming down and setting a route and see other people crack the code that I intended or be completely stumped by it. So it's just great to have other people over and see what they think of it, and they're usually pretty stoked on it. There's a lot more climbers on this little sandbar than people would imagine. Basically, I started with the pull-up bar, and that was just hung, hung on the door frame. And then I decided that I wanted to <laughs> try to build a hangboard, so I built the hangboard, and then from there, 
it's just kept gradually growing. All it is is it's three quarter inch plywood and that's on two by four bracing. So one of the things that I did was I attached the bottom with a cord. So in the future, if I wanted to make it steeper, then I can do that as well. And this is just my, my little climbing oasis when I'm not able to make it to the gym or gym's closed. I have such a love for climbing that I, I definitely want to do it 24-7 and this helps. <laughs> it doesn't matter what type of climbing you're into, whether that's bouldering, ice climbing, alpine climbing, uh, triad climbing, sport climbing, all of those challenges and those emotions that, uh, that we get to battle every time we climb, it, it, it's not limited just to climbing. I think it's the puzzle solving, the physical three-dimensional puzzle solving that keeps me coming back. So I think that constant problem solving translates into my everyday life, into work, into home life, and it just keeps you sharp. Climbing in general, just you just feel strong after doing it, right? You just feel powerful. And I think it's, I think it's awesome. I wish I could do more with it. Uh, be a little bit more of a part of it, but uh, that's not where life is right now for me. And you know, if this place, uh, if this place doesn't go any further, then you know maybe all this is going to be dispersed amongst these other small areas, so these other smaller ones get a little bit bigger, you know, and and, and then they grow. Some people have uh, some spin bikes. Some people have a uh, trainer for their bicycle. Some people have a couple barbells or dumbbells or whatever it is that they're into and it's not a whole lot different for those of us who enjoy the climb.